Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images and in this video I'm going to try and address a question I'm asked quite often by people after looking at my various printer reviewers is I want a bigger printer. Um, sometimes they have reasons for wanting a bigger printer such as making bigger prints because bigger prints look impressive. I've done a video about looking at large prints. Um, sometimes it's just because they want to experiment with it or whatever. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a common question and it depends where, the answer depends on where you're coming from and just what you mean as big. Now, for a lot of people printing their images, A4 is quite a large size, particularly if you frame it, it can look quite good on a wall. What about the next size up? Because all decent photo printers start at A3 plus. Um, you can get acceptable photo prints from A4 printers, but I've not seen one that I would regard as a high-end photo printer. So effectively, we're looking at A3 Plus and above. Now, I've got lots of articles about this on the Northlight website, and there are things also looking at large format printers. Now, large format printers are something I'd use for making, say, a 60-inch by 40-inch print, or something really huge. Um, distinctly different from ones here. All of the examples I've got here were produced on what I'd call desktop printers. So the first up you get to would be the A3 Plus printers. And in ones I've looked at recently, that would be something like the Canon Pro 200, Canon Pro 300, Epson P700. Now the Pro 300 and the P700 use pigment inks. Pigment inks last longer. They have better black and white performance. Um, and they tend to be more expensive. But the amount of ink you get in the ink cartridges tends to be higher than small printers. Now, I'll come back to ink costs in a bit. Um, this particular printer that happens to be here is Canon Pro 200. Now it's unusual in that it's a dye base printer and it has uh, eight inks and it happens to be capable of exceedingly good looking glossy color prints and prints on some art papers. Um, I was quite surprised by it. I'd not used a dye-based printer like this for quite a few years. I've normally used pigment-based print, ink-based printer, and all the higher-end printers are pigment inks. <coughs> Excuse me. Pigment, pigment inks last longer. Um, if you're worried about prints still being around in 200 years, then pigment inks are for you, but you pay for that. Uh, there's also a wide range of papers they work with. So some of the sort of heavy Barita style papers um, work far better with pigment inks than dye inks. Um, but anyway, have a look at some of the reviews I've done if you're interested in detail. But we're talking about size here. Um, so that's A3 plus or 13 inch width here. Next up is 17 inch width. Now that allows you to print A2. Now that's an A2 picture. Um, quite a bit bigger. Uh, the Epson P900 is one I recently looked at and when it first came out I also have got a detailed review, although not a video, um, of the Canon Pro 1000 which is also a 17 inch printer. So we're going up in size. Now the question I get asked is regularly about this apart from details of printing is what happens if I don't print very often? Now any printer of any size should, to my mind, have a label on it that says, use me often. The bigger the printer, the more it has been designed for heavy use. So desktop printers like this, this Pro 200, it could comfortably leave this a couple of weeks or so and start it up and it'd probably be okay. For likewise for the other uh, A3 ones like the P700 and the, P and the Pro 300. Um, Personally, I like to do something simple, just like a simple nozzle check on plain paper. You can get loads of these on a single sheet of paper if you're feeling really tight on it and don't want to waste paper. Um, you can get these. It takes no more than just a quick pattern on the paper and that exercises the printer. I would normally leave printers on, although if they default with a power off, I'd leave it at that. Um, I've no reason to change it. Likewise, unless you really know what you're doing, don't go around looking in the depths of all the printer configurations to try and turn off cleanings and things like that. It's counterproductive. And 
the people I find who ask more about the costs of ink and the cost of ink waste used in cleanings and things like that are people coming from a small printer side of things. So if you're used to using small printers, then the costs of ink can figure quite highly in what you do. If, however, you're used to using large printers, um, you know, sort of much bigger than we've got here, the ones that I have tested and I've got reviews of them, then you just accept ink use is maintenance. It's part of the cost of ownership of having a bigger printer. So if you're going for a bigger printer, you will need to use it regularly. And uh, by regularly, I mean, don't leave it for months on end without switching it on and running something through it. Um, you may well get problems. It may well clear itself after a few cleanings. And on the matter of cleaning printers, um, after the second cleaning cycle you run, you are doing no more than wasting ink. If you need to do a nozzle clean, run it, leave it a few minutes, do the check and see whether you need it again. If you do need to do it, do the cleaning, do a check, and if it still needs cleaning, go away, make a cup of coffee, have lunch, go out, something, leave it overnight. Because continual cleanings get you nowhere. You just need to leave the inks to soak, to soften anything, to clear anything, and then try the process again the next day. Um, I've had people say, I, I've, I've run 10 cleaning cycles and it still doesn't work. Well, no surprise. I could have told you that after three. Um, it, it's how, a great way of wasting ink. Um, but remember that ink, as I said, is actually part of making the printers run. Um, your ink is essentially, it's like, a bit like engine oil. Uh, the engine oil doesn't contribute to um, actually propelling the car forward but it keeps it running. And it's the same with ink. And I would say, um, yes, ink costs, get over it. It's a cost of printing. Um, it, it's also why I've got no real time for third party inks or continuous ink systems. Um, if you are into that end of cheap, then they will serve you well until they don't work. Um, I would never use them myself. I don't sell inks, I don't sell printers, so I've got no interest in that. But personally, I would just never ever use them. Opinions may differ, um, I disagree with that. It's as simple as that. But in terms of the cost of printing, the more printing you do, the less the proportion of ink that's used in cleaning and the likes. You do really need to look at the true cost of printing. And I'm reminded, somebody said to me, um, they were complaining about the cost of ink, the amount wasted in waste tanks and various things like that. And they used to print in the darkroom. And um, I said, so when you processed a film and you made a print from a negative, was that first print perfect? Oh, well, probably not. Second, third, um, so how many bits of photo paper, chemicals, time, did you use up getting a print? Um, did you complain about that? Well, no. Um, in the same way with printing on inkjet printers, the printers use ink to keep running. You will use up ink on making test prints. Look upon it as payment for what you're learning and your abilities and skills to actually be able to print. Um, hope that's of help. Um, I would just add one other thing about moving to a bigger printer. All these big prints, they look great. What are you going to do with them? But anyway, that's another question for another time. Um, hope these uh, videos are of use. So uh, thanks again. And uh, do check out the articles uh, on the Northlight website because that's where I can put more detail and links to other things than that. So cheers.